<laughs> Welcome to the City Council meeting for August 22nd, 2016. Please join me in saluting the flag. I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, Councilors, before we get going tonight, uh, the City Clerk has asked for a moment to address us to uh, straighten out some information that we were given at the last finance meeting to do with uh, repair licenses and garage licenses. So if there's no objection, Mr. Clerk. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. The reason I've asked to speak is to uh, clarify some of the conversation or the remarks that were made at the last finance meeting concerning motor vehicle repair licenses, <coughs> garage licenses, and authority of the council, and uh, a few other subject matters that I'll touch on. Uh, I won't take a great number of your time uh, tonight on it, but I'm willing to come before a committee of this council at any time and speak at length or a one-on-one -on -one situation, whatever is convenient to any and all of you. But I think we have to clear this point up, and the longer we let it slide, the more confusing it's going to be. First of all, let me start with the licenses. You have a garage license and a motor, uh, motor vehicle repair license. The question was, or the statement made was, that there were no stipulations on the garage licenses when these code enforcement officers went into the garages. And in that point, they're absolutely right, except for one point here, that there were never any stipulations on any garage licenses. They are only on the motor vehicle repair licenses. The only thing that the garage license shows, in effect, is the number of vehicles to be stored in that garage, and, and that's what the garage license is about. The motor vehicle repair license, as you know, is where we place the stipulations as to the hours of operation, uh, outside storage of vehicles, vending machines outside or, or any stipulations that we feel could cause or create damage to the neighbors or the neighborhood. And again, let me make this very clear. It does, there are some licenses that have been issued and are issued without any stipulations. The council has the right not to invoke stipulations. The ordinances say that the council may place restrictions. It does not say that they shall. So that you do have licenses out there without restrictions, and I believe that probably those licenses issued at that time without stipulations uh, were uh, done in good faith of the people coming in uh, by the councilors that went to the location, saw that the buildings were in good repair, and talked with the proprietors and felt that they would follow the regular rules and regulations of the city of Brockton. So consequently, you will have some garage uh, motor vehicle repair licenses, body shop and mechanical, that do not have restrictions. However, I think for the most part, you find that there are some restrictions in place. You do not need to place a restriction on a business if they tell you and you know that they're going to work normal working hours. If it's that type of a repair shop, and we have many, or take a look at your dealerships. How could you go in when they've got 200 new and used vehicles in a lot and now tell them that they should only have five vehicles there for repair? So you don't do that. And that's why those would not have restrictions on them. So once again, I want to make it clear that some licenses are without restriction. Some, uh, most part, do have restriction. Is, is there any error? Yeah, we're all subject to error here. Percentage of what I would imagine is very, very little. I think my staff <coughs> uh, I'd like to clear up the statement made that there seemed to be a disconnect between the council and the clerk's office. 
Uh, I don't li mind the word disconnect as it's uh, supposed to state itself in the dictionary, but I find it offensive to the council and the clerk when you indicate that perhaps maybe the council or the clerk's office are not working together or don't know what they're doing. That's how I take it. I may be wrong, but that's how I take it, and uh, I find uh, I'm offended by it. Also, the council has the power, as well as issuing, to revoke licenses. I listened to conversation that evening that said that the uh, <coughs> issuance of these licenses should be turned over to the licensing board because they're better equipped to take care of these infractions. That's not so. The council has the same power that the licensing board on alcoholic beverages has. The question and the answer here is, if it's not reported to the council, then how can the council take action on it? So the council can hear, have a public hearing on, they can revoke after just cause, and, uh, but they have to receive notice that there are violations. So the process is there, it's just to be followed. So I don't, you know, I'd like you to give that some thought as to this talk about transferring licenses uh, for motor vehicle repair, garage licenses, to the uh, License Commission. Uh, I have to say this, that I believe that the License Commission has a plate full as it is, but a very important factor here I think you'll have to consider is who knows the neighborhood better, who knows the people that live better, than the councilors that represent those wards and the council at large. You can answer that for yourself. So consequently, I believe that the council should, should not <coughs> consider moving their power to the license board, okay? Uh, I'm not being selfish because believe me, if you transfer that, it makes my life a lot easier and my staff would greatly appreciate it because it takes a hell of a lot of work off the shoulders. But I don't think the council should do it. I have other points to go over, but rather than tie you gentlemen and ladies up tonight, I'd just soon do that in committee or one-on-one, -on -one, as I said, or your separate committees. Uh, and I'd be willing to discuss audiences. I'd be willing to show you files. Uh, Councilor Fowle brought up some photos uh, at your meeting. And some indications were, well, you know, we shouldn't go ahead and just put these tickets on these people or find them. Uh, you know, we, you can't do it, it's their first time. It's not their first time. I know those people, I could tell by some of the names mentioned, they're habitual offenders. And until code enforcement comes before this council and gives the council the information so that they can bring these people in and follow the process of, due process of a hearing, that these people are gonna go on and on and do just what they wanna do because they feel is that they don't have to answer to anyone. So I think the strength of the council is here, but it can't be used until a proper reporting system is in place. And that has nothing to do with the clerk's office or the council itself, but strictly by code enforcement. And that's about what I have to say tonight. I don't think it's a question and answer period. And I know we have other business to conduct, but I just felt as though I should come up here and make these points. I think they're very important, and I hope you consider them. And whether or not you follow them is up to you. I can only suggest. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Clerk. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Uh, Councilors, uh, as you know, we postponed that uh, to November. I will add the clerk to the uh, invites. But in the meantime, I will be reaching out on behalf of the council to the chief of police tomorrow to ask him to have his designee sit down with the city clerk and make sure that he understands where the uh, ordinances speak and uh, make sure that we're moving forward on that. So uh, I'll make that call in the morning. And uh, again, I will add the, the uh, clerk to the <coughs> November finance meeting, which hopefully by then we'll be in, in much better shape on this issue. So Mr. Clerk, item number one.
The acceptance of the City Council minutes of July 25th, 2016. Accepted and placed on the file. The reappointment of William Sharnick as a constable to the City of Brockton for a term of three years. Refer to finance. The petition of Celia Insurance Agency, West Elm Street, for a signed permit. Refer to public safety. The report of the Finance Committee for its meeting of August 15, 2016. They accepted and placed on file. We have an ordinance amending Chapter 2 of the revised ordinances of the City of Brockton be ordained by the City Council as follows. Chapter 2, Ad Administration Section 2-28, hereby amended effective January 1, 2018, and Council June 13, 2016. Ready to refer to the Standing Committee on Ordinance. And passed to a third reading on June 27, 2016. is favorable. Question is to be ordained by roll call vote. Will the clerk please call the roll? Azak. Yes. Beauregard. Yes. Cruz. Yes. Ioneri. Yes. Farwell. Yes. Lally. Yes. Monahan. Yes. Rodriguez. Yes. Stadinsky. Yes. Sullivan. Yes. Ten in the affirmative. The ordinance is ordained. Honor for bending chapter eight of the revised ordinances of the city of Brockton by adding a section required commercial premises to provide and maintain litter receptacles. In Council April 25th, 2016, referred to Committee on Ordinance. In Council May 9th, Council Aziak, motion to refer to ordinance properly seconded. Motion carry. Council July, June 27th, 2016, the amendment passed by a hand vote. Passed to a third reading is amended. <coughs> the amendment is as follows. By deleting the words provided, however, that this section does not apply to the first fire district as defined in Section 7-12. It is favorable as amended. Question is to be ordained as amended by roll call vote. Will the clerk please call the roll? Azak. Yes. Beauregard. Yes. Cruz. Yes. Ioneri. Yes. Farwell. Yes. Lally. Yes. Monahan. Yes. Rodriguez. Yes. Stadinsky. Yes. Sullivan. Yes. Kennedy Affirmative. The ordinance is ordained. The sum of $900,000 appropriate to pay costs of developing a municipal and school facilities master plan, including the payment of all costs incidental and related thereto, and that to meet this appropriation, the city, with the approval of the mayor, is authorized to borrow set amounts under <clears throat> pursuant to Mass General Laws, Chapter 44, Section 7, Clause 21, and Section 7, Clause 22 of the General Laws, are pursuant to any other enabled authority, <clears throat> and to issue bonds and notes of the city therefore. Further ordered that the city treasurer is authorized to file an application with the Commonwealth of Mass Municipal Finance Oversight Board to qualify under Chapter 44A of the General Law any and all bonds and notes of the city authorized by this vote and to provide such information and execute such documents as a Municipal Finance Oversight Board of the Commonwealth of Mass may require. There is a conditional certification on this by the CFO. In Council, June 27, 2016, refer to the Committee on Finance. That report is favorable. Question is on adoption by a roll call <coughs> vote. Will the clerk please call the roll? Azak. Yes. Beauregard. Yes. Cruz. Yes. Pioneering. Yes. Farwell. Yes. Lally. Yes. Monaghan. Yes. Rodriguez. Yes. Stadine. Yes. Sullivan. Yes. Ten in the affirmative. The order is adopted. The sum is six, six million six hundred thousand dollars appropriated to pay costs designing, and constructing sewer mains and related pertinences, including the payment of all costs incidental related thereto, and to meet this appropriation, the city, with the approval of the mayor, is authorized to borrow a set amount <coughs> under the pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 44, Section 7, Clause 1, and or Section 8, Clause 15, are pursuant to any enabling authority and to issue bonds and notes of the city, therefore. Any borrowing pursuant to this order may be undertaken through the facilities of the Mass Clean Water Trust, Lee Trust, and to that end, any appropriate official of the city is authorized to enter into one or more loan and security agreements with the trust and one more project regulatory agreements with the Mass <coughs> Department of Environmental Protection, as may be required in connection with any financing through the trust. Further order that the city treasurer is authorized to file an application with the Commonwealth of Mass Municipal Finance Oversight Board to qualify under Chapter 44A of the General Laws any and all bonds and notes of the city authorized by this vote and to provide such information and execute such documents as the Municipal Finance Oversight Board of the Commonwealth of Mass may require. 
The CFO certification is conditional, provided that the City Council be willing to periodically increase rates so that the sewer enterprise fund remains fully self-sufficient. And Council June 27, 2016, referred to Committee on Finance. That report is favorable. Question is on adoption by a roll call vote. Will the clerk please call the roll? Hayes Hack. Yes. Beauregard. Yes. Cruz. Yes. Van Erie. Yes. Farwell. Yes. Lally. Yes. Monaghan. Yes. Rodriguez. Yes. Studinsky. Yes. Yes. The order is adopted. Ordered that $1,100,000 appropriated to pay costs designing and making sewer flow metering improvements, including the payment of all costs incidental and related thereto. And to meet this appropriation, the city, with the approval of the mayor, is authorized to borrow set amounts under pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 44, Section 7, Clause 1 and or Section A, Clause 15, or pursuant to any other enabling authority, <coughs> and to issue bonds or notes of the city, therefore. Any borrowing pursuant to this order may be undertaken through the facilities of the Mass Clean Water Trust, the trust, and to that end, any appropriate official of the city is authorized to enter into one or more loan security agreements with the trust and one or more project regulatory agreements with the Mass Department of Environmental Protection, as may be required in connection with any financing through the trust. Further ordered that the city treasurer is authorized to file an application with the Commonwealth <coughs> Municipal Finance Oversight Board to qualify under Chapter 44A of the general laws any and all bonds or notes of the city authorized by this vote and to provide such information and execute such documents as the Municipal Finance Oversight Board of the Commonwealth of Mass may require. The CFO certification is conditional conditional certification, provided that the City Council is willing to periodically increase rates so that the sewer enterprise fund remains fully self-sufficient. In Council, June 27, 2016, rendering for the Committee on Finance, that report is favorable. Question is on adoption by a roll call vote. Will the clerk please call the roll? Yes. Beauregard. Yes. Cruz. Yes. Pioneer. Yes. Farwell. Yes. Lally. Yes. Monaghan. Yes. Rodriguez. Yes. Spadinsky. Yes. Oliver. Yes. Kennedy. The order is adopted. Order that a loan order of $4 million is appropriated to pay costs of making energy efficiency <coughs> improvement to the city's street lighting system, including associated design and engineering services. The conversion of standard lighting devices to LED devices, fixtures, upgrades, and the payment of all other costs incidental and related thereto. And that to beat this appropriation, the city, with the approval of the mayor, is authorized to borrow <coughs> set amount under and pursuant to Mass General Laws, Chapter 44, Section 7, Clause 3B, or pursuant to any other enabling authority, and to issue bonds and notes of the city, therefore. Further ordered that the city treasurer is authorized to file an application with the Commonwealth of Massachusetts Municipal Finance Oversight Board to qualify under Chapter 44A of the general laws any and all bonds or notes of the city authorized by this vote and to provide such information and execute such documents as the Municipal Finance <coughs> Oversight Board of the Commonwealth of Mass may require. In Council June 27, 2016, refer to the Committee on Finance, that report is favorable. Question is on adoption by a roll call vote. Will the clerk please call the roll? Hayes Hack. Yes. Beauregard. Yes. Cruz. Yes. Pioneer. Yes. Farwell. Yes. Valley. Yes. Monaghan. Yes. Rodriguez. Yes. Stadinsky. Yes. Sullivan. Yes. Kennedy. The order is adopted. Appropriation of $18,000. Uh, Councillor. Uh, could we take 11 and 12 collectively? Second. Motion made and seconded to take items 11 and 12 collectively. All those in favor? <laughs> All those opposed? Mr. Clerk, please read rate. items 11 and 12. Appropriation of $18,000 from unappropriated estimate receipts, ordinary revenue, fiscal 2017, Council on the Ancient <laughs> over time to provide funding for an additional part-time staff position in fiscal 2017. Appropriation of $9,000 from unappropriated estimated receipts, ordinary revenue, fiscal 2017, to counsel on aging personal services other than overtime, to allow the hiring of a full-time staff assistant for the final three quarters of the fiscal year. In council, July 25, 2016, ready to refer to the Committee on Finance, that report is favorable. Question is on adoption by roll call vote. Will the clerk please call the roll? Azan. Yes. Beauregard. Yes. Cruz. Yes. Pioneer. Yes. yes. Farwell. Yes. Lally. Yes. Monaghan. Yes. Rodriguez. Yes. Stadinsky. Yes. Sullivan. Yes. 
The order is adopted. Mr. Councilor Rodriguez. Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion for reconciliation in hopes that it does not prevail. Second. second. Motion made and seconded for reconsideration in hopes it does not prevail. All those in favor of reconsideration? All those opposed, reconsideration fails. An appropriation of $75,000 from unappropriated estimate receipts, ordinary <coughs> revenue, fiscal 2017, to DPW Water Commission, Water Enterprise Fund, desalinization charges, to provide additional funding up to 15 days of purchase of desalinated water during the summer at the full contractual amount. The water revenues are not sufficient to support this added purchase, but this funding by the general fund will allow the city to exercise a sustained full test of the system. And Council June 27, 2016, referred to the Committee on Finance, and Council July 25, 2016, Councilor Fowle, motion to refer to finance, motion properly seconded, motion carried by hand vote. Recommendation is favorable as amended. Mr. President. Councilor Sullivan. Uh, if I could, a uh, moment, uh, uh, point of information. Um, as you may recall, I, I made uh, a request uh, to the CFO, Mr. Kahn, in relative to this, and I, and I did it in the form of amendment uh, to see if Aquaria would, uh, would waive that uh, um, $75,000. Um, we actually got a report back today, and I just want to report back to those that are in attendance and those watching tonight uh, that the Mr. Mr. Kahn and the CFO, Jay Conan did indeed uh, speak to Mata. Verde, who is the head of Anima, which is the majority owner of Aquaria. Uh, although they did not waive the full amount, what they did do is they offered to provide the city of Brockton 15 days of water purchase at 50% of the contracted variable rate chan charge. So um, again, uh, I want to thank all my colleagues. The amendment, I think, was, uh, was met, at least the intent. We didn't get 100%, but we got 50%. So point of information. Thank you, Mr. President. I thank you, and thank you for your amendment. Uh, save the city some money. and. The question is now on the amendment. All those in favor of the amendment? All those opposed? The amendment carries. The question is now on adoption as amended by a roll call vote. Will the clerk please call the roll? He's here. Yes. Beauregard. Yes. Cruz. Yes. Pioneering. Yes. Farwell. Yes. Lally. Yes. Monaghan. Yes. <clears throat> yes. Studinsky. Yes. yes. Sullivan. Yes. Kennedy affirmative. The order is adopted. <clears throat> order that pursuant to the provisions of Mass General Laws, Chapter 44, Section 53A, City Council hereby authorizes the acceptance and expenditures of the donation from CDM Smith made at the Department of Public Works. The list of donated items is going to be discarded by CDM Smith. In Council, July 25th, 2016, refer to the Committee on Finance. I report as favor. Questions on adoption by roll call vote. Will the clerk please call the roll? Yes. Yes. Cruz. Yes. Pioneer. Yes. Farwell. Yes. Valley. Yes. 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 Studinsky. Yes. Sullivan. Yes. The order is adopted. Order that pursuant to the provisions of Mass General Laws, Chapter 44, Section 53A, City Council hereby authorizes the acceptance and expenditures of the donation of well, 18. $8,668.98 from Brophy and Phillips to the City of Brockton Planning and Economic Development Department to replace the existing swing set and slide climbing equipment at the Ashfield School in Council July 25, 2016. Ready for the Committee on Finance. That report is favorable. Question is on adoption by a roll call vote. Will the clerk please call the roll? He's here. Yes. Beauregard. Yes. Cruz. Yes. Pioneering. Yes. Farwell. Yes. Lally. Yes. Monaghan. Yes. Rodriguez. Yes. Stadinsky. Yes. Sullivan. Yes. Kennedy. Order is, uh, order is adopted. Council Lally. I would like to make a, uh, a motion for reconsideration in hopes it does not prevail. Second. Second. Motion made and seconded for reconsideration in the hopes it does not prevail. All those in favor of reconsideration? All those opposed? Reconsideration <laughs> fails. <laughs> Order that, 16. Pursuant to Mass General Laws, Chapter 44, Section 53E and one half, City Council approves a reauthorization of the Animal Control Revolving Fund not to exceed $5,000 for fiscal 2017 for the sole purpose of receiving deposits for the spaying and neutering of animals with expenditures restricted to the care of animals, such expenditures to be at the discretion of the Director of Animal Control. In Council, June 27, 2016, refer the Committee on Finance. I report as favorable. Councilor Farwell. Mr. President and uh, colleagues, I 
am going to oppose items 16, 17, and 18, and I'll just briefly give my remarks for this agenda item. It isn't that I object to the appropriations or the purposes. However, Massachusetts general laws require that authorization for these reestablished revolving funds should be done or must be done prior to the start of the fiscal year, which is July 1st. Uh, that interpretation of the law was confirmed by our legislative council. So simply on procedural grounds, I will be voting no, and in no way does that reflect my uh, feeling that the funds aren't needed. Thank you, Thank Councilor. You. Mm -hmm. Question is on adoption by a roll call vote. Will the clerk please call the roll? He's here. Yes. <coughs> yes. Cruz. Yes. Ionary. Yes. Farwell. No. Lally. Yes. Monaghan. Yes. Rodriguez. Yes. Studinsky. Yes. Sullivan. No. Eight in the affirmative, two in the name. The order is adopted. Pursuant to Mass General Laws, Chapter 44, Section 53E and one half, City Council reauthorizes the K-9 unit revolving fund for fiscal 17 for the sole purpose of helping to fund the costs in connection with the K-9 unit of the Proctor Police Department. The K-9 unit revolving fund shall receive the receipts of the sales of K-9's bond to the existing K-9 unit. Expenditures from the K-9 unit revolving fund shall be made at the direction of the Chief of Police, provided that not more than $5,000 may be so <coughs> expended from the K-9 unit revolving fund during fiscal 17. And Council June 27, 2016, refer the Committee on Finance, that report is favorable. Councilor Sullivan. Mr. President, I too just want to echo the sentiments, sentiments of uh, Mr. Farwell as Legislative Council explained to us there's a specific legal deadline. Uh, and even in the past, if the city missed it, we weren't aware of that as a collective council. Uh, so again, I too am uh, going to vote against this because it doesn't abide by Mass General Law. Thank you. Uh, questions on adoption by a roll call vote. Will the clerk please call the roll? He's here. Yes. Beauregard. Yes. Cruz. Yes. Pioneering. Yes. Farwell. No. Lally. Yes. Monaghan. Yes. Rodriguez. Yes. Studinsky. Yes. Sullivan. Nope. <laughs> the, affirmative the, the order is adopted. So in the Mass General Laws, Chapter 44, Section 53 and one half, City Council approves the reauthorization of the Police Department closed cases revolving fund for fiscal 2017 for the sole purpose of spending by the police chief for ordinary maintenance expenses of the Police Department. The police department closed cases revolving fund shall receive monies and police possessions from closed cases. Expenditures from the police department closed cases revolving fund shall be made at the direction of the police chief, provided that no more than $35,000 may be so expended from the fund during fiscal 17. And council June 27, 2016, refer to the committee on finance. That report is favorable. Question is on adoption by a roll call vote. Will the clerk please call the roll? Yes. Beauregard. Yes. Cruz. Yes. Ionary. Yes. Farwell. No. Lally. Yes. Honeyhan. Yes. Rodriguez. Yes. Kinsky. Yes. Sullivan. No. Eight in the affirmative, two in the name. The order is adopted. Appropriation of $25,000 from the Executive Office of Housing and Economic Development Commonwealth Community Compact Grant Program to the City of Brockton Planning and Economic Development Commonwealth Community Compact Grant Fund. In Council, July 25th, 2016. Refer the Committee on Finance. Our report is favorable. Question is on adoption by a roll call vote. Will the clerk please call the roll? Azak. Yes. Beauregard. Yes. Cruz. Yes. Ionary. Yes. Farwell. Yes. Lally. Yes. Monaghan. Yes. Rodriguez. Yes. Studinsky. Yes. Sullivan. Yes. Ten in the affirmative. The order is adopted. I'll uh, be in a brief recess. Mr. Okay. Uh, it's, it's on twice. Oh. It's 21. It's okay. just a mis misprint. 
Thank you. Uh, yes, we are. Item number 20. Resolved that the city, CFO, and treasurer appear before the Finance Committee to discuss the practices and procedure of credit card authorization mm -hmm. and usage by certain city employees. End Council, July 25th, 2016. Right before the Committee on Finance, that report is favorable. Questions on adoption by a roll call? President. Oh, we want to refer it. Councilor Sullivan. Mr. President, uh, this was my resolve, and as everybody may recall, I made a caveat that I'd send it back favorable to this esteemed council, but I wanted to send it from here. I'd make a motion to send it back right. to the council committee. I have spoken to the chair, uh, Ward 3 Councilor. He also, uh, he chairs the council committee. He also would like to see this. He has some concerns about the petty cash that was brought up during that resolve. So I am going to make a formal motion to send it back to a council. Second. 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 Motion made and seconded to send item number 20 to the accounts committee. All those in favor? Opposed? Uh, referred to accounts. Resolved that the Brockton City Council opposes lifting the cap on the Commonwealth Charter Schools. And Council July 25, 2016. Ready to refer the committee on finance. I report is favorable. Questions on adoption by a roll call vote. Will the clerk please call the roll? Azak. Yes. Beauregard. Yes. Cruz. Yes. Pioneering. Yes. Farwell. Yes. Valley. Yes. Monaghan. Yes. Rodriguez. Yes. Stadinsky. Yes. yes. Sullivan. Yes. The order is adopted. An audit amending revised auditors of the City of Brockton, Chapter 5.5, and accepting Mass General Laws, Chapter 40U, in its entirety. Refer to ordinance. An audit amending Chapter 2 of the revised ordinances of the City of Brockton, be ordained by the City Council of the City of Brockton as follows Chapter 2, Administration, Article 6, Boards, Commissions, etc., Division 9, Brockton Commission on Women's Issues, Section 2 530, Membership and Appointment. Refer to ordinance. An ordinance amending chapter 14 of the revised ordinances of the City of Brockton be ordained by the City Council of the City of Brockton as follows. Chapter 14 is hereby amended by adding the new following section, section 14-17.6, fireworks. Refer to ordinance. Order that the portion of Hammond Street laid out by the board of Mayor and Alderman on October 17, 1888, and accepted by the Common Council October 17, 1888, extending from East Street Easterly to a point 155 and 200 feet west of Thatcher Street, B, and the same is hereby discontinued or abandoned. Refer to finance and planning. Order the Chapter 40U of the Mass General Laws and hereby is accepted by the City of Brockton in accordance with General Laws, Chapter 40U, Section 2. Refer to ordinance. An order adopting a fuel-efficient vehicle policy as part of the Mass Green Communities in Initiative Fuel-Effective Vehicle Policy. Refer to finance. An order that the Public Safety Committee of the City shall perform an audit of current licenses issued by the Council, review the restrictions, if any, on those licenses, and evaluate related ordinances which affect code enforcement. Refer to finance. Resolved, invited guests from Father Bills and Main Spring to present their next project at 682 North Main Street and discuss the state of the homelessness overall in the city of Brockton. Refer to finance. Uh, councilors, just a reminder, we are still on summer schedule. Uh, by ordinance through September. Uh, finance meeting will be on Monday, September 19th, and full council will be on Monday, I September 26th. Uh, I believe, Council, did you want to announce on the council committee meeting? If I might, just a moment of personal privilege, uh, Mr. President, because I do want to uh, let the accounts committee members know and, and my fellow colleagues as well that we'll have a um, accounts committee meeting that same evening that we're having finance, but at 5.30 p.m., because we have a lengthy agenda, so. Just to remind everybody, it will be 5.30 p.m. and we'll be done in time for finance. Thank you. So September 19th September at 5.30. 19th. Thanks. Thank you. Mr. Mr. President, if I could, um, since we won't be back due to the summer session, I do this uh, every election cycle. I want to remind people that there is a primary election coming up, and it's on Thursday. It's September 8th. Again, mm -hmm. polls are open uh, 7, 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. Uh, here in the city of Brockton. Thank Just you. a reminder to the public, it's a Thursday this time. Thursday, that's it's right. It's very unusual here, so please get out and vote. Council Farwell. Yes, just a moment of uh, personal privilege. <laughs> we, councilors, we will not meet again uh, before school opens, and it's always an exciting time of year. And through all of the city's challenges, the one thing we've had is exceptional schools, exceptional programs and services. So I would just like to extend to the students and parents and the Southeastern Regional School Committee and to the parents and children of the Brockton Public Schools and our own school committee, best wishes for a safe and healthy uh, school year 
may everyone uh, excel and enjoy all that the city has to offer. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Thank you very much. I don't know if you know, but Councilor Ian Airy used to be on the school committee. <laughs> <laughs> Councilor Beauregard. What was that? When was, Thank it? You, when Mr. was President, that? A moment of personal privilege. You I may. believe last week we remember our finance committee meeting where we had the not so favorable report about uh, uh, the evaluate, evaluation <clears throat> of our city and um, and an effort to begin the momentum to change that is uh, we begin to launch this campaign to change uh, the perception of Brockton because there are so many positives. I could not be up here every uh, meeting reciting all of them. We'll pick and choose and we'll continue the momentum and encourage the residents of this city to highlight the positives. So I'm just gonna mention one right now here is that uh, there's a work um, and learning program over the summer and we have a lot of students cleaning the streets and I just wanna point out that uh, a lot of streets look pretty nice uh, and uh, since a lot of us wanna see the streets clean, we're very pleased with that. And we also wanna highlight the fact that we are a center of culture and arts and we have a huge event taking place over three days, the um, Arts and Music Festival that started uh, just around the block here and now has expanded to not only one afternoon but three days. And I hope that people consider joining it on Friday, Saturday and Sunday at the Stacy Adams uh, building at 33 Dover Street. And once again, all these events that take place throughout the city, they're really positive, like Summer Fest over the weekend, always done by volunteers in the city. That's another positive. Thank you. Thank you very much. You. Uh, and Council, as I should have mentioned, Councilor Barnes did contact me. She is at a work meeting tonight, couldn't be with us. Uh, any other questions? We're adjourned.